Patch 1.5 with Survival is live on the public test server on the PC platform and after playing it for quite a while yesterday, I think I know enough to make a, a very complete video about this new Battle Royale style game type and of course what else is coming in this new update such as uh, new gear and a lot of new weapons. So today I thought I would give an overview of everything that's to come for those that did not have the chance to play it or watch some streams about it or for those that maybe want to know things in a little more detail. So let's begin. Just like with all of the other major updates that have been coming out in the past, patch 1.5 will be coming with a gear score increase, meaning that 229 gear score items or item level 33 items will no longer be the strongest in the game. Gear score will go up to 256, which of course adds item level 34 items. This also means that there will be another world tier added, world tier 5 where all the enemy NPCs will be skilled up to level 34 as well. Now, gear score 256 items, they seem to be, once again, quite a significant step up because the main stats on that gear can now roll between 1114 and 1272 as compared to the 881 and 1008 that uh, the gear score 229 pieces come with. This in turn means that, yes, players will have to refarm their favorite sets and favorite items when 1.5 drops, however, I do not believe that this will be a bad thing considering that the loot is a lot easier to come by right now. It's not going to be anything like patch 1.3. And this gear score increase will also help to get rid of the older legacy gear that still has those skill attributes on them which makes them more powerful and makes the playing field a little bit uneven. But as I mentioned at the start of this video, besides a flat gear score increase, Massive will also be adding new weapons and new gear set items to the game. There will be 16 new weapons to be exact. And so far I've had my hands on the MG5, the M70, the Rhino Pistol and a few others. Some of these weapons also come with their own unique talents such as the M700 which uh, does 10% more damage when you're more than 1.2 meters above the enemy target. Or the UMP45 submachine gun which has the ambusher talent where players do 10% more damage to targets in cover. That's also a first timer right there. The first new gear set that's being introduced to us in patch 1.5 is the D3 FNC set, which was previously known as the frontline gear set, you know, the one that supports a ballistic shield. The two-piece gives you 15% extra protection from elites, the three-piece bonus gives you 30% more ballistic shield health, and the four-piece allows you to use an SMG while holding the ballistic shield, but all of the critical hit chance will be removed from the weapon. Besides that, we're also getting named gear for the very first time in the game, which can only be found in World Tier 5 or in a survival game mode. There's one named gear item for every slot, and they are very similar to the high-end gear, where they just come with one talent and you can equip them with whatever items you want to go with. And they all have unique and powerful bonuses that further boost different playstyles. For example, the backpack would go really well with the four-piece banshee for people that really do not like dying in the dark zone and losing all their gear. Among with the new items, there will also be another balance pass to make sure that all of these new weapons and some of the old weapons remain on an even playing field. Several weapons such as the Hungry Hawk, the M60 and the M870 will have their base damage reduced, but there will also be some tweaks to auto-aim on consoles. More specifically, the auto-aim around the shotguns. It will be made a lot weaker. Skills are also getting some more tweaks, and if you want the full list of uh, every single detail, every single little thing that's going to be changed, you can take a look at the patch notes. I've linked them down in the description box down below. However, I don't want to spend this whole video talking about every little small thing that they changed because the highlight is without a doubt the survival game mode and we haven't even gotten to that yet. So let's talk about this instead. First and foremost, to avoid any confusion, survival mode is a separate game mode that players will have to start up in a different instance from the rest of the game. You can start this in the underground hub where you can go up to, to this area and you can find the game using the matchmaker. Now, once you find enough players, a session will start. You will see this cutscene and you'll be thrown into the survival game mode. In here, you will lose all your gear, all your items, all your consumables and all your crafting materials and you will start off with a very basic kit of a few medkits, a sidearm pistol and some green gear items. And you will also be placed in a random safe house on the map. Unlike to the normal map, the map in the survival session has many safe houses. Almost one on every other block I would say. And these safe houses act very similar to the safe houses that you have in a normal open world. You will be safe here from any NPCs or any other players that may have spawned close to you. In addition to that, you will also find a crafting bench in every safe house. And this is pretty important because you're going to have to craft a lot of things. Not only gear, not only weapons, but also your skills, because you do not start off with your skills. 
and your mission objectives, but uh, we'll talk about those soon. Once you go outside of the safe house, things can get pretty nasty. The very first new feature that you will notice is that in the top right corner of your screen, you will see a temperature indicator with a temperature bar underneath it. And as you might have guessed, you have to keep your agent warm. The longer that you stay in the cold, the more this bar will drain. And once the bar hits zero, your character will start to slowly freeze to death. Now, as far as I know, there are three ways to combat the cold. You can either travel from safe house to safe house and warm up in there, or you can find places out in the open with a, with a campfire or any other heat source to warm yourself up over time. The last thing that you can do is also scavenge houses uh, to find better clothes, which come with a higher temperature level. Uh, wearing different clothes with higher temperature levels will allow you to withstand colder temperatures as well as stay in the cold for much, much longer. Now, I'd wish that finding new clothes would be kind of essential to your survival, but I feel that uh, the freezing mechanic isn't punishing enough. Basically, what it does is once your bar is drained, you will slowly, slowly, very, very slowly start to lose health, which can be a nuisance early on. But once you're able to craft things such as the first aid or med kits, uh, you'll be able to use those to fill your health bar back up, therefore kind of deleting the whole freezing to death mechanic. I think what I would like to see is that when you're freezing, your maximum health starts to drain, so you can't heal yourself back up to full health anyway with the first aid. This way, there's a real danger to staying out in the cold for too long. Right now, it kind of feels like just a little bit of a gimmick. But the cold isn't everything, because the second thing that you have to worry about is your infection. All players that drop into a survival session are infected with a virus that will kill them slowly over time. You start off with one hour of time left alive. And you have to fight medicine or painkillers, which can either slow down the timer or temporarily stop it and allow you to stay alive for much longer. However, there is a cooldown on medicine intake as well, so eventually everybody will die. There is no way to stay alive forever. The consumables such as water and canned food, they also have been repurposed. Instead of giving the player buffs, like in a normal game, you will use these to combat hunger and thirst. And although you cannot really die from either thirst or hunger, being hungry or thirsty adds debuffs to your character, such as uh, a slower health regeneration and things like that. Again, I kind of went through a whole survival session without eating or drinking one, so I definitely feel like that these things are not punishing enough at all. But hey, that's why we have the PTS. They can maybe adjust these things for the final game. And these are mainly the new features that have come with survival, I would say. These are the things that the player has to worry about. But apart from these things, players will also have to do the general thing in the division. They have to find new gear and new weapons. Because as I said, you start off with full green items and a pistol. Everybody's mission is to get inside of the dark zone, shoot up a flare from there and save yourself from dying to the virus. But in order to do that, there are three steps involved. First up, you have to craft a special Dark Zone mask. You can craft this special mask in any of the safe houses, but in order to craft it, you will of course need to get crafting materials that you can only find in the open world. Now, these aren't too hard to find. You can of course still deconstruct items that you get, uh, just like in a normal game, but you can also find special crafting material boxes. And once you have enough to craft a mask, you can go to any safe house and craft it there on the crafting table. After which, you will be able to enter the Dark Zone. One thing you have to keep in mind though, is that all the checkpoints will be closed, so you have to jump over one of those walls to get in. Meaning that, once you go into the dark zone, there is no way back out. Step 2 of your mission is to craft a flare gun. Unlike in a normal game, you do not have a flare gun to start off with. Now these flare guns, they can only be crafted inside any of the dark zone safe houses. And, unlike with the rest of the gear, you will need division tech to craft it. That might sound easy enough, uh, until you realize that the Division Tech boxes have been removed and moved around and are a lot more scarce now. However, fear not, because if you cannot find any Division Tech, there's always an objective on your map marked as Antivirus. And if you cannot find any Division Tech yourself, you can go to this location as well, because this location will always have Division Tech as well. The Antivirus location is always random though, and it is different for every single player. Then, after you get enough materials and you have your division tech and you've crafted your flare gun, step 3 of the mission starts and you have to extract. What are you going to extract, you might ask? Well, you're going to extract yourself, because unlike in a normal game, the helicopter will land and it will come to pick you up. But that isn't everything, because while you're in the dark zone, you're also able to find sealed caches. These sealed caches, they will go in your dark zone loot bag and you have a total of 6 slots. If you successfully extract yourself, you can take these items with you, and then when the game mode ends, these sealed caches will go back to your main account, where you'll be able to open them for a lot of rewards. And these caches, they give you a lot of rewards. 
However, extracting isn't as easy as it sounds because the moment that you shoot your flare gun up, a new enemy type will spawn which are the hunters. Hunters are NPCs that act very much like players. They dodge roll, they use skills such as the sticky bomb or the first aid. And overall, they're pretty difficult to fight off the first time around. But if you manage to kill them, they will drop even more caches that you and your team will be able to pick up. And after 3 minutes, the helicopter will get to your location, it will land and you can get in and fly away to safety. What I'm getting from this game mode is that it is a high risk, high reward activity because if you die, your character will of course not be able to respawn and your session will end. That means that you also did not extract any loot and that at best you will maybe get one or two caches for participation. Even though that as a player you could have invested an hour in the whole activity. But if you manage to complete the mission, if you manage to survive, uh, you will be overflown in rewards because of course you will be able to extract six of those sealed caches. I got like 20 items from a single run and it feels very, very rewarding. Now one thing that some of you might like to hear is that this game mode has a PvP mode which allows you to play uh, on a server with 24 other players that can all either team up with you or try to kill you. But in addition to that, there is also a PvE mode for players that just want to try to survive versus the environment without having players in their way. Now, obviously, I myself, I think this game type is a lot more exciting with other players, especially once you fully understand the game mode and such. That is maybe also because, uh, in my opinion, it all felt a little bit too easy. On my first try, I started up PvP and I went in alone. Uh, then quite early on, I met Erex and we teamed up pretty much until we completed the whole run together. Uh, up until the very end where we met two other players that joined us as well and then we extracted as a four-man team. We all completed it on our first try. You know, not knowing what was going to happen. I gotta admit that at one point things got pretty dicey, Erex went down and I couldn't really get to him. Uh, but the second time around, when I was playing with a pre-made four-man group, I didn't even care about loot, I didn't even care about resources, I didn't care about my hunger or my thirst. I didn't care about myself freezing to death, I didn't even craft any skills and I kind of just YOLO'd the run trying to get six caches and extract. And that strategy was 100% possible. The hunters, they were intimidating the first time around, but uh, when I knew what was coming, when I was prepared for it, it was a walk in the park. Uh, I think we killed all the hunters within 40 seconds, and then we had to wait another two minutes for the helicopter to land because we killed the enemies too fast. I'm going to make another video on this topic soon, giving all my thoughts on all parts of the survival mode and try to give as much feedback as possible, but the initial impressions are is that uh, right now it's definitely a bit on the easy side of things and uh, the possibility to play on a higher difficulty for even better rewards, that would definitely not hurt the game mode in any way. But as I said, I'll get back to that soon. For now though, that is going to wrap things up very nicely. If you have any questions left about what's to come in patch 1.5, then of course let me know in the comments down below. More videos are obviously already on the way, so stay tuned for those, and I will see you all later. Or like they say, in the Netherlands. See you later!